Today I have with me the Triumph Tiger 660 Sport. Now it does carry the Tiger name, the moniker, but how much of a tiger is it really? Is it really a tiger? Can it do what the tiger does? Let's dive deep into it. I was riding the amazing Triumph Tiger Sport 660. But before making you jealous of how great the bike is, let me first do the numbers and we'll go from there. There's a 660cc liquid cooled inline triple based on the Triumph Trident 660 engine. It is a 12 valve double overhead cam engine that delivers 80 bhp at 10,250 rpm and 64 newton meters of torque at 6,250 rpm. It comes with a six speed gearbox with a slipper and assist clutch which works beautifully around corners with practically little to no rear wheel hopping with aggressive downshifts. The 0 to 100 numbers are impressive consistently clocking around 3.7 seconds and the top speed number at 204 km an hour or 130 miles an hour. The Tiger weighs in at around 206 kilos weight or 455 pounds and the motorcycle feels pretty light overall. The tank capacity is at 70 liters or 4.54 US gallons that gives you a range of 330 kilometers or 205 miles before you run dry depending on your riding style. With spirited riding, you would end up dry about 10 miles earlier, but overall, it is pretty fuel efficient. Before getting more into the details, let me tell you that this is one of the most exciting motorcycles that I've ridden in this price range in the last couple of years. The acceleration, the thrill, the speed, every aspect will put a smile on your face. That said, let's see if the Triumph really walks the talk. It is a great engine, no doubt, but it is not really a Tiger. It is not an adventure bike. It is more of a sports touring motorcycle. The suspension is not designed for doing any kind of adventure riding. Talking about suspension, in my opinion, this is not the kind of suspension that one would expect of a performance motorcycle. It is too plush for my liking. Going around corners, it is okay, but not the best. However, the quality of components is really good with an inverted cartridge with independent function forks in the front with no adjustability. And in the rear, it is preload adjustable. Both suspensions are from Showa. Both suspension travel is 150 mm or 5.9 inches. It is good enough for long touring rides, very comfortable, but it is neither good for adventure riding nor is it good for performance riding on the track. But this should not be a deal breaker. About the frame, it is a steel perimeter frame which gives some sort of rigidity and stiffness to the handling and feedback, giving the motorcycle some amount of handling to ride home about. Thanks to the frame and the riding geometry, this motorcycle leans in easily even though the suspension is not great. Let us talk about the braking. The Tiger 660 comes with three 10mm disc up front, double disc in the front, and a 255mm disc at the rear with ABS as standard fitment. There are two Nissan calipers at the front and the usual single caliper at the rear. But the braking is the one big weak spot of the motorcycle. In my opinion, it lacks sharpness and bite and the ABS is too intrusive. If you're hurtling down the track at 150 km an hour and if you grab a handful, all you feel is the jitters of the ABS. One has to be an experienced rider and be really good at anticipatory braking to make full use of the brakes as is. This has been my personal experience. It does the job, but it can be much better, which I would like it to be. Now let me show you how I sit on the motorcycle. I'm 165 centimeters tall or 5 feet 6 inches. It is an easy and comfortable fit on me. Seat height is at 834 millimeters or 32.8 inches. I'm definitely not tippy-toed. I sit comfortably. Had it been a true adventure bike, however, it would have been significantly higher because of the suspension travel, which would have been more. I can easily ride on this from Philadelphia to Mexico City and not get tired or bored. I can also ride in the city of Philadelphia all day long and commute around with great pleasure and ease even though I tested this bike only in New Delhi in India, where riding itself is an adventure. I sit comfortably, my back is relaxed, so are my knees and wrists. It is a very ergonomic riding stance. The seat is broad, roomy and comfortable. You will quickly align yourself with the motorcycle for long rides. The windscreen is a big plus for long, fast highway rides to keep you protected from the wind buffeting. The windscreen is adjustable even though it does require some muscle to move it up and down. Let me show you how this bike rides and accelerates in the real world and the sound from the wonderful triple.
the acceleration is absolutely phenomenal. It does not feel like a 660 engine. It feels more like MT09s of the world. Of course, MT09 has a better top end, no doubt about that. Talking a little about the electronics package. The Tiger 660 comes with minimal electronics, two rider modes, road and rain. The rain mode has a reduced torque output to keep the riders stable. It also gets traction control that you can switch off if you go off-road and you get an always on ABS, which I'm not a big fan of personally, and there is no cruise control, unfortunately, for a touring bike. The TFT screen is full of information and you can toggle through all of that at leisure. However, there is one gripe that you may have is that you cannot find the total odometer reading. For that, you'll have to switch the ignition off and switch it on again, and you'll see the total odometer reading for a fleeting second before it disappears. It is funny and annoying at the same time. You have GPS, GoPro connectivity, but you cannot see the total odometer reading. I rode the version that had a quick shifter. Being brutally honest, not the best quick shifter I have tried in my life. You still have to blip it before shifting. Why have such a quick shifter? I fail to understand. The Triumph Tiger 660 is priced at 9,695 US dollars. For a 660cc bike, it may seem expensive, but it is not. It is more expensive than the nearest competition, the Ninja 650 and the MT-07, true. However, in fun and low-end torque, the Tiger will beat the pants off both these bikes. They do not stand a chance in the torque delivery and the fun that that torque gives. Triumph claims that cost of ownership is 30% less than its competition. Service interval is at 16,000 kilometers or 10,000 miles, which is pretty impressive. The Triumph carries the moniker of the Tiger, but it has nothing Tiger about it. It is an out-and-out -out street bike with sports touring capabilities. It is an amazing engine, incredible fun, and that engine is a success story from Triumph being on the Trident. Neither the suspension nor the brake should be a deal breaker for you. I am saying this simply because I had tremendous fun with this motorcycle. If you want to commute and do long distance touring on good tarmac and you enjoy spirited hard riding, I would highly recommend this motorcycle. You will not regret it. Now to conclude, I'd like to pass the discussion on to you. I find this to be an absolutely fantastic motorcycle. My experience is absolutely fantabulous. Now I'd like to know your comments. What do you think of the Triumph Tiger 660? I'd like to know your comments in the comment section down below and I'll be replying to your comments. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. Until then, ride safe.